before there was C++, there's a programming language called C or ANSI C. C is the language that C++ is based on. And then MATLAB is written in C++. So we're going to kind of follow the history here a little bit. So in the ANSI C programming language, the uh, there's a family of commands that were used for reading and writing text on the screen or to files or to anything else. This um, family of, of commands is called the printf family. The f in printf, this stands for formatted. There are three commands for printing formatted input on the screen. There's also a set of commands for reading formatted information out of a file. So you could kind of use this command to parse information from a file. We're not going to talk about that because it doesn't exist in MATLAB. But the three commands were this, were these. There is printf, which was um, to uh, write formatted output on screen. There was fprintf, which was to write formatted output to a file. That's what the first F stands for here, file. So file printf. Then the third command is sprintf. This is formatted output to a string variable. So you could save that output into a, a variable for use in something else later. So there are these three commands that were used to print formatted output. When they wrote C++ or you know, assembled the C++ language, uh, they created their own new commands for formatted output in C++. But um, I guess what you call legacy users of ANSI C found that these printf, fprintf, sprintf commands were super useful. So they got included in C++ as well. So C++ actually has two ways to do a formatted output. Um, and this is one of them. Pretty much un, uh, unchanged from ANSI C. When they wrote MATLAB, MATLAB is written in C++. When they wrote MATLAB, um, MATLAB includes its own um, methods for doing formatted output that are, I believe, similar to C++. Not the same, but fairly similar. But once again, these, this family of commands becomes very useful. And so they're also included in MATLAB. So um, this is included in C++. And also included in MATLAB. In MATLAB, there's some slight differences. So in MATLAB, printf and fprintf have been combined into one command called fprintf. That's for printing to screen or file. And there's also sprintf to print to a variable. So that's the history of the command. Here's how we use it. So let's say I want to print on the screen 
something like this. Let's say I have a variable that contains my age. And I want to print on the screen. Oh, let's do another one here. Let's say we also have my name on here. And I want to print on the screen, hello, my name is John, I am 30 years old, something like that. Here's how I would print that. These are all lowercase letters, by the way, frequently asked questions. So there's an example of the fprintf command. What this is going to do is it will print on the screen text that looks like this. It'll say, it'll of course print it in nicer looking handwriting. So some pieces of the puzzle here. First, we have our command, fprintf. The last f stands for formatting. The first f stands for file. Now, in the case of MATLAB, it also prints on the screen. They've just combined the two commands. Um, we'll talk about printing to a file in a second. So now, inside the parentheses, the first part is your text string. This includes two pieces, or two things, or two kinds of things, I should say. It includes literal text, that's the hello, my name is, comma, and I am, years old. That's all literal text. It also contains these two placeholders. These are called format specifiers. The format specifiers, the way they work is um, they're placeholders. And they get replaced with variables. So here we've got our variable list. These values replace the format specifiers. If there are two format specifiers, there need to be two variables in the variable list. And they're going to go in the same order. So the first format specifier is going to get replaced with the first variable in the variable list. The second format specifier is going to get replaced with the second variable in the variable list. You can have any number of, for of format specifiers. You have to have the same number of uh, variables in the same order. Now, these format specifiers you can use to control what, um, what these numbers look like. So this is a way that we can uh, basically write complete sentences that include the values from our variables. If we wanted to use this to um, right to a file, it'd be slightly different. There's a couple of steps we have to take. So, okay, in order to do a print to file, we first need to create the file itself. The command to do that is 
F open. And then you name your file. And inside that parentheses, you also have to put a comma W. What that does is it um, opens the file, creates it, and sets it up so you can write information to the file. So W for write. Now, when you create this file, you want to save the output here into a variable. I usually call it FID for file ID. You're going to need that for a couple of things. You need that file ID to tell fprintf which file to put your information in. And you're also going to need it to close the file later. So our fprintf command is going to change a little bit here as well. It'll still be fprintf. But then inside the parentheses, the first thing that's going to appear there is this file ID, followed by a comma, and then the same command. So to print to a file, we just add this part right here to the fprintf command. But we have to, of course, open the file and then create it and everything like that. So create and open the file. Then you can do all our fprintfs. And you can do more than one fprintf. You can do lots of fprintfs, fprintfs in here. So dot, 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 we do a bunch of them. When we're finally done printing to that file, so when you're done with the file, when you're done with the file, you got to close it. And the command to close a file, F close. And then your FID in parentheses. You don't ever need to know what that file ID number is. If you save it here as a variable, you can just use FID. You don't have to call it FID. You can call it whatever you want. But FID, I usually use that. This stands for file ID. If I have more than one file open at a, at a time that I'm fprintfing into, I'll maybe have FID1, FID2, FID3. I'm not keep track of it that way. Okay, so that's how you print to a file. But the internals of the fprintf command, you've got your literal text and your format specifiers. That's all going to be the same. Okay, now if you want to save to a variable, we can do that too. print to variable. Now we're going to use sprintf. So for printing to a variable, the command is the same, except instead of being fprintf, it's going to be sprintf. And we want to actually save a variable as well. So it looks just like fprintf for printing to the screen, except it's sprintf. And we have some variable equals at the beginning. Other than that, the command's the same. So let's take a little bit of time and we'll talk about these format specifiers. There are a bunch of format specifiers. I'm just going to give you the most commonly used ones. These are the ones I really the only ones I ever use. I haven't really needed others. So I'll just give you these guys, and then we'll discuss how they all work. So the first one is percent %d. Now, all of the format specifiers are going to start with a percent sign. That's how, uh, that's how the command is informed that it is receiving a format specifier instead of literal text. So they all start with a percent sign. Then they all end with a code. So percent %d, this is for integer values. The reason they use d instead of you know something that might seem more logical like i is it has to do with um, 
how these are saved in the computer. So D actually stands for decimally separated integer value, which again, sounds counterintuitive, um, but it has to do with binary numbers and the way that numbers are stored in the computer. They're actually stored as a base unit multiplied by two raised to a power. And so the decimally separated means it involves the, uh, the base unit and the power. And that's how all integers are stored in the computer, the base unit and the power. That's why this is called percent D or decimally separated integer value. I know it's weird, but that's just kind of what it is. Okay. So there are modifications that we can make to these format specifiers. I should actually just kind of give the general form here of these format specifiers. Let me pop that in here real quick. So in general, we have a percent sign followed by modifiers, followed by a code. I should call that a type code. So in the case of integers, the, there's the percent sign, the type code is D. The modifiers are gonna be like this. So let's say we want to, no matter what our integer number is, we want to make sure that it takes up three spaces. So if it's one, it's gonna take up three spaces. If it's a hundred, it's gonna take up three spaces. Let's say I wanna create a number that has four spaces in it. Now, if my number is one, the number is gonna look like this. If my number is 21, it'll look like this. But it's still gonna have these spaces ahead of it. My number is 421, it'll be like that. And 1,421, it'll look like that. So in order to specify that I want my number to have four spaces, regardless of what the value is, I can enter that here in my format specifier. I can say percent four D. This will say that I, I am asking for a four digit or a four space number that is going to be an integer. So again, if it's one, it'll be space, space, space one. If it's 21, it'll be space, space 21. If it's 1,021, it'll be 1,021. Now, if my number is longer than the specified number of spaces, so if, let's say my number is 11,021, it'll automatically, even if I say I want four spaces, it'll give me that fifth space. It's not gonna truncate any piece of the number. It'll automatically add one if need be. Okay, let's say instead of having space, space 21, I want to have leading zeros. I want it to look like 0, 0, 21. So I can do that too. The way I would do that is for my format specifier, I would say percent 0, 4, D. So the 0, so the 4 says I want a number with 4, with a width of 4 characters. The 0 says I want to have zeros before any number that is less than four characters. Now let's say my number is negative. If my number is negative, it's gonna automatically give me a minus sign, no problem. But let's say if my number is positive, I want it to look like this. I want it to have a positive sign. And then I gotta ask for the positive sign. So I can do that like this. Percent plus zero four D. So this will require that my number has a printed positive sign or negative sign. It'll always have a negative sign if the number is negative. You don't have to ask for a negative. But if you want a positive, you have to ask for that. If you want your plus sign. You ask for the plus sign by putting a plus sign in your modifier. Now you can have any combination of these modifiers. You can have all of them or none of them. You don't, need to, you don't need to put any modifiers on here. If you just put percent D, it'll print however many number of digits it needs to put in the number and space it out that way. 
So here we're taking control of the spacing, leading zeros, and a plus sign if we want one. Now, if you don't specify a spacing, you can't specify leading zeros because it's not going to need them. So those two are kind of interrelated. To do real numbers, the format specifier is percent %f. Now, the reason it's called percent %f, again, not really intuitive with real numbers. Um, the way a real number is saved in the computer, it's actually saved as three integers. It's saved as a base unit, a power. So it's base unit times two to some power. And then it's also saved as the location of the decimal point. And that location of the decimal point is allowed to move around. That's called the floating point. So real numbers are saved in the computer and they're called floating point numbers. So floating point. That's the computer way of saying real numbers. So for real numbers, we have similar controls to what we've got for integer values. So let's say I have a number that is uh, 1.5. Now, the first thing we can take control of is how many decimal places are going to appear here. So let's say I want this to print out to four decimal places. So I want it to look like this. In order to get my decimal places, I can request that here. I can say 0.4 F. So this says four decimal places. No matter what my number looks like, it's going to give me four decimal places. Let's say I want to take control of the entire width of the number. So the entire width of the number, let's say it's 1.5. Let's say I want to I want to be able to type numbers out to up to the hundreds here. So the total width of the number is going to include the decimal point. So our total width is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so the format specifier now is going to be 8.4f. So 8 is the total width of the number. Total width. 0.4. Is the decimal places. This determines where the decimal point is going to be. Actually, I should number this the other direction. So if you have 0.4, that means you're going to have four numbers before, or four numbers after the decimal point. So 0.4 means the decimal point is going to go in space number five. And then we count it out all the way to however many number of spaces you request. I said a total of eight spaces, and that includes the decimal point. So now this number is going to appear as space space 1.5000. Now, if I want to have leading zeros ahead of the first number, if you know there's only one digit, I've left room for three, I want leading zeros, I can request leading zeros the same way I did with the, um, the integer values. Throw a zero in front. Now this is going to appear as 0, 0, 1.5, 0, 0, 0. And again, if I want to have, so if the number is negative, I will automatically have a negative sign. But that negative sign is one of my spaces. And if I want a plus sign, if that's a positive number, I just request the plus sign the same way I did in my integer format specifier. But again, 
my plus and minus sign, that is one of my that is one of my spaces. Or one of my, my character widths in my number. So that's included in the character width. Okay. So that's the real numbers. Real numbers are you know they're similar to what you do with the integers, but we also get to deal with the decimal places. The next one, scientific notation. And so the way that MATLAB prints scientific notation, if our number is something like uh, one times 10 to the minus six, MATLAB is going to print that as 1e minus 0, 06. That's why, that's why e is the, the format specifier for scientific notation. So the formatting for scientific notation is exactly the same as the formatting for floating point numbers. You know, if we have 1e minus 0, 0,6, you don't really get any control over this part. It's always going to look like that. Something I should mention, I forgot here. You can use, low, you can use lowercase e or capital E. And the difference that's going to make is um, with lowercase e, it's 1e e minus 6 with lowercase e. With capital, it'll be 1. Oops. It'll use a capital E. So again, it just depends on how you want your numbers to appear. Now, as far as the part before the e, so this part, that you have control over. And the format specifiers for this part are going to be exactly the same as the format specifiers for real numbers. So the same as real numbers for the base. But you don't get any real control over the E or the exponent. So that's percent E. The next thing is going to be percent S. This is for a string of text values, a string of characters, I should say. So S is for string of characters. or letters. There's no uh, modifications for this. This is just to insert a variable that contains text. So uh, no modifiers. That's percent %s. Um, there is another one that's also for characters. That's percent %c. This is a single character. So if you wanted to insert a single character, you could do that. Here's one that could be useful. Maybe something you're typing involves a percent. What if you wanted to say 100%? Well, I've already told you the percent sign tells the fprintf command that you're inserting a format specifier. But if you actually want to write a percent sign, well, 
we can do that too. The command for that is percent percent. So that's convenient because, you know, occasionally you actually want to put a percent in there. So what you're basically telling MATLAB is format specifier. No, actually I want a percent sign. I was actually asking for a percent sign. But if you want a percent sign, you got to ask twice, basically. Okay, a couple other useful ones that come in handy. Okay, so my original sample command here. Notice that the uh, actual text string is enclosed in single quotes. So if you wanted to use an apostrophe in your text string, you have to tell MATLAB that. So to use an apostrophe, you just do double apostrophes. Again, just like the percent sign, you got to ask twice. Now, this is not a double quote. This is two separate apostrophes. So, not a double quote. That's the apostrophe. Another thing you might have noticed that I didn't really mention, but I will go back and point it out now is at the end of my text string and before I close my quotation mark, I put this symbol in here. This is a backslash n. Let me rewrite it so it looks like a backslash and n. The backslash n here, this represents the end of the line. So this will actually, if you, if you f print f something without an end of line character, it won't even move the cursor to the next line when you're done. It'll leave the cursor right there at the end of whatever you just printed on the screen. So the backslash n moves the cursor to the next line. That could be helpful if you're printing a bunch of things on the screen, like printing a table or printing the same in a file, or you just want to move your cursor to the next line so you can issue the next command. So that's going to be an important one too, backslash n. This is end of the line. Same as pressing enter. One more is backslash T. I actually never use this one, but it exists. So we can use it. This is to enter, enter a tab. So you can put a tab into your um, text as well. Again, I never use that one because uh, tabs tend to vary, the, the width of a tab varies based on what program you're using, uh, what computer you're using, what operating system, things like that. So the tab has too much variation. I don't bother using it. If I want eight spaces, I'll type eight, I'll hit my space bar eight times. <laughs> 